Hello everyone and welcome to the Matilda Book Club brought to you by Penguin Young Readers. And as everybody knows who did their homework this month, this month's book club was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Everyone's favorite, uh, well known and beloved I dare say. And I'm so excited because today we not only have the amazing Lucy Doll. Hello Lucy. Hello. We also have a very special guest. Missy Pyle, who played Vol uh, Violet's mother in the movie Willy Wonka. Hello, Missy. Hello. It's Mrs. Beauregard herself. She's so gorgeous. I know. <laughs> so we're very excited that everyone's here today. And thank you, everybody out there, for sending in your questions for Missy and Lucy. They were amazing. And we're going to ask some right now. So to start, ladies, can I ask you both a question, in fact, right off the bat? Uh, you know that in the chocolate factory, there is the lickable wallpaper, everyone's favorite station. Mm. So I have a question for both of you, for starts. What, if you had a flavored wallpaper, what flavor would you want it to be? Ooh, that's a great question. It's loaded. It's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. I actually, in, in the name of Violet, I might to ha like to have more than one flavor. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> is it an option? Of course it is. Okay. So what do you so think? Multiple multiple flavors. I would like my three favorite things. I'd like coconut. Mm hmm And I would like chocolate. Uh, mm-hmm. And I would like prosciutto. <laughs> <laughs> That's a complete meal. Yeah, yeah. wallpaper. It looks like a meal. Missy, what do you think? Well, if I can have more than one, thank you, Lucy. You're welcome. Um, I would like uh, tapioca pudding. Would be mm -hmm. one flavor of wallpaper. <laughs> um, I would like uh, like a s'more, a marshmallow s'more mm -hmm. wallpaper, and then um, grilled salmon. <laughs> yeah, that's so sensible. <laughs> You're all very sensible, ladies. I was going to say caviar, but I thought that that might not be nice. Can I, will you, can I come into your room? Can we swap rooms? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you have taken courses. Taken courses. Because s'more salmon sounds delicious. Terrible. Well, or delicious, yes. Uh, so I do have a question actually for Lucy, which is sort of a good, you know, first, second follow up. Um, you know, when Roald Dahl was writing this book, what do you think? inspired him to write about a chocolate factory, first of all, and then about Charlie himself? Well, I don't think it's any secret that he was passionate about chocolate. That was his, that was his number one passion um, next to whiskey, I think. <laughs> and um, so that was right all the way from school, he, he loved chocolate and he, he loved um, he knew all the dates of all the different chocolate bars and when they were invented. You never think about a chocolate bar when it's invented, but no. so he, he knew the date of the Snickers and the Mars bar and all, and from the very, very first chocolate bar that Cadbury's made, he knew. And um, Charlie, well, he always wrote a good underdog, didn't he? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, if you think chocolate, your neck, and then you think, well, who could be a good underdog? It would obviously be somebody who never eats chocolate. Yeah, well, chocolate. that's it. Exactly. So, but that's so, incredible um, that he was around at the origins and the start of all these candy bars, which we used to have been around forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was. He was sort of around when, as things were coming out, you know, as new chocolates were coming out, they were, they were coming into his chocolate shops, or they were getting them at school. So, so it was a big fascination because that's you know it was real to him. Oh, it's so cool, Missy. Yeah. Did you did you grow up reading Roald Dahl's books, or did you just get introduced to Roald Dahl when the movie came along for you? No, I, actually, my favorite, and I'm not just saying this. It will sound like I'm just saying it, but my favorite book as a child was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I Aww. absolutely floored by. I also loved in the. I don't know if in the the book that I had the 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 illustrations. Mm -hmm. were sort of mind-blowing. And I remember, like, I loved the idea. I loved the underdog of Charlie. I think we all kind of feel that way at some point. And, and I was, like, the fifth child, and I kind of didn't really get much myself. Like, there was never enough of anything. And 
just him finding the way he enjoyed that chocolate. And I think it was when he found the dollar. Was it what was it he found on the sidewalk? A dollar, a dollar, a dollar. Yeah. And and how what much that meant to him. I could see it and feel that street where he picked it up, and then taking that chocolate bar and the way he loved it and unwrapped it, and then his four grandparents laying in those beds. I thought about that all the time. Actually, the first movie. Um, that came out, Willy Wonka and the Child of Fiction. I was actually quite afraid of it, and it, it, it upset me because I had read the book. And and, and this, I think that happens to a lot of people when you are in love with a book. You then see a movie and you think, because oh, it was what I had created in my head. And that story, I, I had read it several times when I was a child, so I couldn't believe when the prospect came along to be in the movie. Mm -hmm. In the movie, the, the original movie from the seventies is trippy. You know, a couple of those scenes, like the the boat in along the Chocolate River into the tunnel, is pretty bizarre. Mm -hmm. Intentionally think, so. Yeah. How did you? I mean, how did you approach, or how did the the part of Mrs. Beauregard or Scarlet, as you mentioned earlier, Scarlet? Excuse me. How did that role come to you? Um, I had. Been, I had auditioned for a part in Big Fish that Tim mm -hmm. Burton had directed. Somebody had fallen out of that movie, and so I came in at the last minute to play a character in Big Fish. And then when the when Charlie and the Chocolate Factory came along, um, we approached Tim, I think my manager, uh, to try to get me that role. And I think that maybe somebody else had the role for a while. And then literally a couple days before um, if they started shooting, they called back to see if I was still available. And so then I got the job last minute and Whoa. jumped on a plane and came out and it was just so incredible. It was such a magical experience for oh me. Oh my god. So you, you broke her kneecaps, I assume. Is that what happened? Yes. Oh Absolutely. no. Well done. <laughs> but now now that was did you do all your I went to the set in London. Did you shoot in London the whole time or were you everything in LA was some in of the London. Time? Yeah, every yeah. every single thing was in London. Um I mean you were there. they had taken over the entire so, um, all the 16 sound stages at Pinewood were all Whoa. amazing, amazing. I remember, I remember, I um, I asked for a chocolate bar, and they said I couldn't have one, and then I was going to take one, and um, then <laughs> and then my sister said, "There's cameras everywhere. You're going to get caught, and that, and you're going to be, you're going to be the shame of the family." <laughs> so um, someone else took one for me. <laughs> Lucy, so didn't you one. say didn't you say that you had something stolen for you off the last movie set, the original movie set? Didn't someone steal something for you? Uh, yes. Uh, no, I, that's terrible. You know what? It's going to come out that I'm the thief. Uh, I think it's already coming. Yeah, I, it's happening now. I may. Uh, I, I have people do the thievery for me. Mm -hmm. I have a golden ticket, and if I was in Los Angeles at my home, I would be able to show it to you. But I'm not. I'm. I'm up in in the San Juan Islands, not at home. So, um, I do. I have an original golden ticket from the first movie. There was actually only five made, and one of the uh, a friend of mine who I know now, who I still am very close to, called Bobby Newman. His uh, father was a producer of the movie and he was he stole after they finished shooting the golden ticket scene he stole all five of them and he gave me one of them. Holy cow. So Missy are, Missy, are you also a thief? Did you take anything from set? Any sweatpants <laughs> or sweatsuits? I should have. I my friend Adam Godley does have a giant he was Mr. T V and on oh. his wall he lives now in LA. He was British but he Played an American in the movie. He mm -hmm. now has a giant chocolate bar that he stole. <sighs> Proper. He stole that from a, a party or something. But he has a big chocolate bar. That's oh, impressive. Place. Well, they only throw, they throw everything out anyway. It's extraordinary. You know, on the on the we did Matilda last time, and on the Matilda set, I have the the great big rules of Punch and Hall from the classroom yeah. in my house because I actually didn't. Well, I suppose I stole them, but they were in the trash. That's wild. Well, I don't know if that's considered considered stealing or not. No, I think that makes you a freegan. Is that freegans who steal things out of the garbage <laughs> and eat them? I think that's, that's what they call them. I don't know. I'm, ha I'm happy to be one of those. Exactly. It's much nicer sounding than thief or garbage, garbage thief. <laughs> oh, golly. Um, so I have another question for both of you. And this question comes from Chris. If you were given a lifetime supply of chocolate, which of course everyone knows Regardless of what happens at the end of the story, each of the five 
Golden Ticket winners gets a lifetime supply. His question is, first of all, would you eat it? My follow-up question is, how would you ration or what would you do with the candy itself? Missy, what do you think? Well, first of all, when you say a lifetime supply, I don't, I don't feel like there has to be any rationing. That's so fair, yeah. No rationing whatsoever. <laughs> um, would I eat it? Yes. I think I would. I think I would have to like put them though at like the top of the tree. Like I'd have to do some kind of workout to get to the chocolates that I actually had it as a reward of some sort. That's a good point. Excellent. Just some, some kind. Just put them always at the en end of a. A long, you know, a journey. <laughs> yeah. I believe it like a very long Hansel and Gretel, uh, you know. Yeah. For yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have a run from my house that's two miles that I go try to do almost every day. So I, and there's a bench at the top, and I would just lay the chocolate bar there. Oh, perfect! Exactly. And eat it, <laughs> and then I could run back home. Exactly. Oh, I love it. That's perfect. When I first moved, when I first moved to Los Angeles, I put chocolate. Uh, it was East. And the Easter Bunny put chocolate, hid chocolate for um, the my children's Easter egg hunt, and uh, I was I wasn't familiar with the Los Angeles weather, and by the time it was time for us to do the Easter hunt, all the chocolate had melted. Oh, <laughs> oh God. So we switched to money the next year, or the Easter Bunny did. <laughs> <laughs> Very practical. Uh, yeah, what would switch. I do with a lifetime supply of chocolate? Well, I would take some, but then I would give some to charity if I could get a tax, dona tax dona uh, dedu deduction. <laughs> do they do that for candy donations? That's, that's a new one for me. Who knew? I don't know if you can donate to candy. I'm going to write off half the Snickers bar. How about that? All right. Yes. Outstanding. Oh, so, um, Lucy, I have another question. This question is from Tom. Do you know if any of the kids in the story were based off of real children? I think that all of them were based off of real children, but but grossly exaggerated. Sure. Uh, but back then, I mean, now I don't think they're so bad, grossly exaggerated because I think children have become horrible. But I think back then they were. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you think they were, you know, a combination of kids from his school or kids as an adult he knew? Maybe a combination of all those. I think, no, I don't think it's kids that you know, because I think that, uh, as an adult, because I think that when you're a child, well, let me rephrase that, I don't think it was children that he knew when he was a child, because when you're a child, you don't see those qualities in children. I think it's only when you become an adult do you see how children should and shouldn't behave and how horrible they can be, <laughs> spoiled and horrible and nasty. And, and the Veruca Salt one, especially when we were growing up, we knew, we knew a lot of them. Missy, did you know those guys? Did you know kids like that? Or do you? Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, I, I remember kids that I went to school with, and, and they're especially the rich kids, you know, the ones who seem to kind of have everything and just sort of be like, eh. And it was right. right. Always a little bit, like, if... It, it was so incomprehensible, incomprehensible to me because I, I would sort of, they would have just th thousands of stuffed animals and things, but they didn't really care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, Missy, what you were saying about Charlie eating the, the chocolate bar, like taking it bite by bite and just savoring every little piece, and then you have Augustus who's like shoving his face and not tasting anything. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's what makes it so, he's so charming, and you actually root for him because it's like he's working for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's so, I mean, I'm, I'm curious for both of you, you mentioned Baruka Lucy, but uh, who, is, who is the kid that stands out the most you as being the most repulsive? Baruka. Baruka wins? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because she terrorizes she terrorizes her father, and I think that's awful when you see children that, that whose parents are really genuinely scared <laughs> of their children and their children's tempers. It's just, it's just awful. It's just <laughs> awful because they're they're genuinely absolutely terrified of them. They they they're never going to win once once they've crossed that threshold. They're they're done. Really? I, Missy, what do you think? I think I was afraid mostly of my own child. You know, just the it's, it's similar to the Veruca Salt thing, but you know. Um, Violet just being like, I'll do anything to win this, you know, is and, and like no matter what, even turning into something that, you know, would then have to be juiced and squeezed and mm -hmm. uh, would do just to, to, to sort of do anything 
because it has that sort of feel of like, you know, that very competitive. I don't want to say American, but just like we'll do anything, you know, and and the idea <laughs> that you kind of lose that, like just enjoyment of what it is and what you're doing and just being present and being like the whole purpose of sort of being alive, just to kind of enjoy and be be present, you know, and work, yes, but then take a moment to enjoy it. Well, that's what I loved about your version of the film and how you interpreted that character because you're both in your sweatsuits and you're <laughs> all about winning and it's the hair and the matching, I mean, it's, it's so, oh, it was amazing. How much of that was given to you and how much did you take it in that direction, in that like super soccer mom crazy? Um, well, I think there was a, you know, it's certainly, when I got there, uh, where they had figured out. I mean, everything was kind of set with the costumes, and the and the hair was actually a little longer, and then they made it a little shorter. Yeah. And that everything would just kind of be clean and perfect. And then this with the set, it's just once you get into everything and you saw everything, and then we the set and with the tons, I had all of these uh, awards of my own in the house. You know, it was just right. my own room as an adult of my own trophy. <laughs> but not, clearly, that's where this kid gets it, and that so that kind of. Gave me the idea of just sort of standing back there and and just kind of. It was mostly walking. baton, right? Your awards are mostly in baton. Mostly in baton. Mostly in baton. Mostly. I love well it. done. Well done. Oh, you know, I love that line. <laughs> my dad. Cool. My dad used to say that the um uh the the children are the fault of the parents, and and there you are, right there, right there, scarlet for violets. That there was it was definitely the the fault of the parents. If you look at the You're parents welcome. and how how they are in the story, and then you look at you know Grandpa Joe and Charlie's parents, and and it's the it's the parents' fault, not the child's fault. No question about it. <laughs> Just like bad puppies, saying yes. Saying <laughs> So I have a question. I mean, uh, you know, Missy, how many other doll books did you? I mean, you Charlie was your favorite, but did you read others? Um, I read James and the Giant Peach, which I loved, and Matilda I read as well. Um, I'm trying. I'm probably. I'm sure I read others, but I, I was. I was such a fan of just that the imagery of that. You know, and I just had a chance to see Matilda. Uh, on Broadway when I was there a couple weeks ago. Yay! And I was <laughs> that's, totally that's blown away. Favorite. Oh, oh my gosh. It was I'm so, so glad. So well done. Um, have there been other Broadway productions of It's World the Dolls? very first, well, it's, it's the very first Matilda, that's for sure. Um, I don't think World Dolls been done on Broadway before. Lucy, correct me if I'm wrong. No, you are right, and I was just in London two weeks ago for the opening of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory at the West End musical, which you must go and see. It was really, it was really great. Sam Mendes directed it, and uh, they they knocked it out of the park. It's 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 good. It's really really great. Well, that's actually a good segue, Lucy, because I have a question for both of you as as fellow Charlie and Matilda fans. What do you think? If Matilda was one of the five kids to find a golden ticket, how would she react to the Chocolate Factory tour and Willy Wonka? I mean, she's a little like Charlie, isn't she? Yes, yeah. I think that she would. She would certainly ask Miss Honey to go with her, not her mum and dad. That's for sure. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Missy, that's a, now you can take it from there. If I didn't steal your line, sorry. No, I mean no, I didn't. I wouldn't. Oh, I just think I just think she would have. She would be. She'd be similar to Charlie. You know, she would really enjoy it, and I think she would actually listen. And um, she would probably. I think she and Charlie would have to duke it out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> at the factory, maybe they would get married and have. I was going to say they're a pretty good couple. Ah uh, yes, yes. Have have chocolate loving bookworm children. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I guess it, it would need to take some time. I'd have to I'd have to wait a little. No, bit. no, sure. There's plenty of time. Eat some candy first, guys. A little bit of time. <laughs> right. We've yeah. we've, al we've already touched on stealing. We shouldn't talk about other things. <laughs> Baby marriage. Yeah. We'll <laughs> that <for this> one. <laughs> so what about the Trunchbull, who is so hilarious on stage? How would the Trunchbull react to finding a golden ticket? I think, well, the Trunchbull, could the Trunchbull go? Well, she, uh, technically it could be anyone who finds a ticket, in theory. It just happened to be all children? 
Yeah, I just happen to be kids. Hmm. I think the trench pole would go and try to terrorize everyone. Uh, to leave to, and I think I think that the trench pole could get rid of a couple of those kids, but there are a couple of those that you know, like I don't think Veruca Salt would be going anywhere. No, fully, they would be a good match. That's a good cage match right there for sure. Yeah. Lucy, what do you think? Can you imagine if the trench pole um, built a chokey for poor little Oompa Loompas in the <laughs> in the factory, and if the Oompa Loompas got out of hand, she'd put them in the Oompa Loompa chokey. <laughs> Oh my gosh! That was, she was, that was terrifying. I was it was pretty scary. I was yeah, kind she's of, amazing. It's a it's a pretty terrific, terrible adult character, and Bernie's so villain. amazing. She's a good villain, that's for sure. You yeah. bet. And how about she's that like, ribbon dancing? My gosh! Well, that ribbon yes. dancing is unbelievable. In fact, you know, my sister would probably kill me to even acknowledge this, but my sister and I like to try and you should try. Try and imitate it, like get yourself a ribbon, because it's great fun. If you ever feel like having a good laugh, get yourself a ribbon and try and leap across your garden or your apartment or wherever you live or your park, because especially if you do it with somebody, because it will make you laugh until you cannot, until, until you fall over. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's a really fun activity. <laughs> That's exactly something that Mrs. Bulwergar would actually be really good at. It, if Baton is an award-winning event for her, I bet ribbon dancing she'd probably kill it. Ribbon dancing? I don't. I don't. I don't think I've ever done any ribbon dancing. Well, you know, rhythmic gymnastics is the technical term, mm -hmm. I believe. Oh, excuse me. But I think Bulwergar would probably. It's a good extension of baton twirling. I think. I think so. How do you how do you know that? How do you know that it's called rhythmic gymnastics? I have friends who only watch the Olympics for rhythmic gymnastics. I am not kidding. <laughs> and my friends. My yeah. friends. <laughs> my friends. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not about you guys. Do they not watch synchronized swimming? Oh yeah, definitely watch that. <laughs> how do people keep their makeup on in synchronized swimming? Waterproof <laughs> mascara? No, it's a lot of makeup. And that's fair. It's thick. Full faces. And it's Next I time. greasy. I mean, you don't see grease piles in the water from that. No. No. It's, well, it's, probably, it's probably invented at Weeki Wachi. Did anyone ever go to Weeki Wachi to the mermaids in Florida? <gasps> oh, I've heard about that. We used to go when we were little. We used to fly to Florida to visit my grandmother, and we would go and look at the mermaids at Weeki Wachi. And they were actual women that had these little air pipes underwater, and they yeah. did this synchronized mermaid show. It was extra I'll never forget it. Well, who was the the old um, Hollywood actress who was famous? Ethel, not Ethel Merman, the one who who always swam in all the movies. Oh. The one who just died. The one who just yes, died. Yes, yes. Missy, do you know? No, oh, it's gonna wait, kill me. Quick, Google it. Ethel, no. Oh, uh, I was gonna say it's Estelle Getty. No, <laughs> I'm just making up. Yes, years. it was Estelle Getty. Was it really? No, I got no points for that. No, she was the Golden Girls. Yes, yeah, right. Oops, <laughs> opposite of swimming. Esther Williams. Esther Williams. Esther Williams. That's it. That's her. Outstanding. Well done, guys. High five. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> High five. Oh my goodness. So um I do have we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. I can't believe it's already been thirty minutes, you guys. You tore know, through that. At least an hour and thirty minutes. I know. Outrageous. Holy cow. Um can you guys tell me your favorite part of the book? Is there one moment you it just the most delicious Part or the most amazing candy or the most incredible invention. What's the, the piece that you re remember that always stands out for you? Cabbage soup. Cabbage soup. I don't know why. If you were to say to me, "Think of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory," I would say cabbage soup. I think the 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 the, the length, the the distance between cabbage soup and the chocolate factory is as far as a, of a distance as you can go, and and. That's my absolute honest answer. I mean, I should probably say Willy Wonka or something like that, but I think cabbage soup. But it's such a beautiful description of their eating, you know, like watering down yeah. cabbage. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, for me, it's been a really long time since I read the book, but um, 
I really, really, really that the opening before he found like him finding that ticket and the joy at that like that moment because when I was a kid I looked under every bottle cap in every I mean I never found any scratch off in every McDonald's <laughs> you know and always hoped for that that moment just and I think for me you know the the times that have come when when you've been like. <gasps> when something special happens to you. It was just, it was so beautiful. And then he got to go on this incredible journey. I, to, to me, just him finding that dollar and going in, because he, he'd already had the fake out of getting the chocolate bar before. Mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. But then finding that, was it wet? The uh, wet, in the snow, in the snow. Snow, yeah. And just taking it to the man at the shop. And then getting that bar, just that whole experience of wonder. That, to me, just still... Oh, it's so. It's weird. like when you like when you make the upgrade list on an international. Yes. Oh. <laughs> when you least expect it, you win. <laughs> That's true, Lucy. It's very true. That happened to me recently. I came, out, I came out to New York to audition for Rocky the musical. I ended up not getting it, but I did get an upgrade. Very Lucy. last one on the way back. You didn't to lose. You didn't lose. Didn't lose. lose. They lost. That's right. Yeah, I'll tell you. Where, We'll rocky them out. Exactly, exactly. It's like the Trunchbull and the Brugasol cage fight. We'll make it happen. <laughs> It'll be ferocious. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, you guys, thank you so much. I want to announce, actually, next month's book club book, if I may. And, oh. Missy, this one's for you because guess what it is? James and the Giant P. Yay! <laughs> So please make sure you all do your homework. And uh, Missy, I'm going to send you a copy so you can read along. <gasps> Just really be here. You win. <laughs> extra bonus. Extra bonus. Lucy, Missy, the get them to send you these earphones. They sent these to me, which was like the I greatest know, presents I've ever been given. They sent them to me. I know. I, was, I just saw too late that I, I could have gotten a pair. I had a pair, and then I just, I just can't find them, like as of today. Listen. Matilda gives the gifts, I'll tell you what. Um, the gift that keeps you. on giving. Exactly, exactly. And I'm so <laughs> glad to see that you got to see the show. Um, you know, things are great in New York, and thank you so much for joining us. It's such um, a beautiful show. Everyone who's out there who hasn't seen it, if you get a chance, it is so moving. And the little girl who played Matilda just absolutely blew my mind. I, just, I was so blown away by the production. Just Ooh, I'm so glad. Really fun. And go and see Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in London on at the West End. Roll doll, all the shows, all the time. That's right, that's right. Well, thank you, everybody, and thank you for Matilda the Musical, and thank you for Penguin Young Readers, and we'll see you next month. Yay! Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you next time.